In this tutorial, we are going to look at how to install SketchUp 2020. So the first thing you need to do is you need to download SketchUp 2020 from our website, which is procadsys.co.nz. So go to products, hover on download SketchUp and click on that. Then you'll need to either register if you've never registered before or log into your account. So I'm going to go and log in. And then straight away you'll get into the downloads area and you'll be able to download SketchUp 2020. So it's not quite released yet, but it will be available for you when you click on this link. So click on the download either Windows or Mac. Um, you can check out the system requirements to see if your computer is up to the task. So once downloaded, you'll see SketchUp 2020 uh, where you've saved it. I've saved mine to the desktop. And then you can double click on it. Okay, next we can click on install. It would be a good idea for you guys to install or restart the computer now. Okay, so click on finish once you've completed installing SketchUp 2020. So you'll see that we get three icons. Uh, one is the SketchUp application, the other is layout and style builder. So if we double click on SketchUp 2020, we need to agree to the end user license agreement and continue. Now you have the option if you already have a subscription to sign in. So this is if you've purchased an annual subscription, a one year license, you have the ability to just sign in with your email and password um, which is associated to your Trimble ID, and then you'll just have access to SketchUp Pro 2020. It's that simple on subscription. If you have a classic license with a serial number and authorization code, you can click on the Add Classic License button. Then under the classic, you can go and add license and you can enter in the serial number and authorization code that you can copy from the email that you receive from us. Or if you want, you can go advanced and copy the whole entire email, for example, and paste it into here. The software will then find what it needs to license SketchUp, and then you can click on add license. So I'm just gonna show you how the subscription works. So I'm gonna to go to the sign in option. And then I've got my email that's associated with my Trimble ID. And then I can sign in. All right, so it says that I'm all signed in and ready to go. So I'll just minimize that for the moment. And you can see that I've, I've got a, a subscription um, that's due for renewal on the 15th of February. So if I now go to files, you can see here that I've got um, some new templates available to me, um, any recent files that may be there. So I'm just gonna talk you through how to um, transfer some of your old settings from SketchUp 2019 over to SketchUp 2020. If you have a classic license, um, just be aware that when you license SketchUp 2020 that your classic license will expire in 60 days. So before you go and license it, just be aware of that in case you're not quite ready to transfer across. Um, if you're using V-Ray for SketchUp, I'd recommend having a, a chat to us about that um, because in some instances, you might need to upgrade V-Ray for it to work in 2020. So just, just have a think about that and come and talk to us and we can help you out. Okay, so I'm going to just choose um, architectural millimeters. So I'm gonna put a little heart 
in there and then click on the little thumbnail. Alright, so SketchUp 2020 is now open. Um, so if I want to pull across some of the um, information that I already have in um, SketchUp 2019, we can go to SketchUp 2019 still, open that up. I can then click on the template that I like to use. All right. So we now have the template opened um, and we can now go file, save as and just save to the desktop an untitled file. And that will then save the settings that I have here. So if I minimize that and open up SketchUp 2020, I can now go file, open and then from the desktop, open up that blank template Okay, it just says that it's been open, oh sorry, that it was created with an older version of SketchUp, so that's fine, you don't need to show that again, and press OK. Then you can go to File, and you can click on Save as Template, and you can then make it your own template. So that's one way of um, saving it as your own. And you can see I've ticked Set as Default Template, so that whenever I go File New now, it's going to open with this template. If, for example, you didn't have an old template to begin from, I can show you how to set one up from scratch. So if I click on File, then New from Template, I could choose that Architectural Millimeters again, and then I can show you how to maybe delete the person, make the background white, um, and just change a few other settings. So with the Select tool, which is the arrow, click on the person, and then press Delete on your keyboard, Go to Styles, then go to, sorry, Styles, then go to Edit, then go to the middle icon, which is Background Settings. We can uncheck the sky, and we can transform the background to white. So I tend to like to use HSB, because it gives me the hue, the saturation, and the brightness. And I just make it 0, 0, 100 then press OK. We now have a white background. Next, what I like to do is go to the edge settings. And for the profiles, I either leave that set to 1, or I even untick it in, in some instances. If we look at the next setting along, that's fine. Add a watermark if you would like to add a, like a logo to your template. You can do so through here, add watermark. And in the last settings, which is the uh, modeling settings, we can change the guideline colors to red. We can change the um, section fill. If you don't want it to be so black, for example, maybe like 20. All right, and then we can now click on update style. Next, what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a couple of scenes for my template. So under the Scenes dialog, we can click on the Add Scene. And then we can um, rename the scene. You can either do it by expanding the show details here and giving it a name, 3D View. Uh, but you can also right-click on the Scene tab and cl click on Rename and, click and name it 3D View. Next, let's create a 2D view. So if you go to camera, turn off the perspective, go to camera again, and go to the standard views and select top. And now you can either click on the add scene or right click on an existing scene and click on add as well. And that will add that as a scene. Then we're gonna right click on the scene tab and rename that 2D view. Or you could, you could call it plan up to you. So once you're happy, select the scene that you would like to open with SketchUp every time. Then go to Window and go to Model Info. 
under animation, this is a personal preference. I like to turn off the animation between scenes so that it travels between the scenes fast. Especially on large jobs, I don't want it to animate and take a long time to transition. And the dimensions, you could set up the way that your dimensions are shown in SketchUp. Under geolocation, if you want to add a location like your hometown, you could do that just to, to get it started. Units, it's always a good idea to check your units. Um, so this is quite cool. We can now set the precision to zero for millimeters, the length. Under area, we could use meters squared and you could set the tolerance or the decimal places that you would like. Um, for, the, for the volume, you could do the same again. You could have one decimal place. All right, so that's quite nice. We've got a few more options down here now. And lastly, we'll just check the preferences under either Window Preferences or the on a Mac SketchUp Preferences. You can go to Window, then Preferences, um, and you can change some of the, the settings if you, um, you know, you might be colorblind, so you might want to change these colors. Um, if we go to drawing, we've got disable pre-pick on push-pull. That's really good to have ticked because uh, not everyone likes that. You can, under the files, assign where you would like your um, files to be saved, where you would like to save your components or access your components. So you might want to change that. General, you could change your autosave option. Open GL. Um, you might want to use maximum texture size if you're importing and using images quite regularly. And I typically turn off use fast feedback to speed things up. Template, I'm already, I'm about to create one so it doesn't matter. Okay, so the template is different to the user interface, so we're going to show you that next, but we need to save the template. So I can go file, save this template, and go PCS. If you want to use a name that you'll remember, I would suggest you're just using template. Because I've made a change to my template now, and I'm saving a new template, so I use the exact same name when I go to save it as a template. And now when I press save, it will give me the option to overwrite my existing file. So when I go to the file menu and new, I've got my template. All right, so typically I like to turn off the getting started toolbars. So how I did that, or how I pulled that off then, was the dots at the beginning of the toolbar. I, you can see my cursor turns into like a move tool, drag it straight off the interface, and then exit. If you're on a Mac, you can go to view and then customize toolbar at the bottom here, and you can drag on the toolbars that I'm about to show. So under the view menu, we're going to go to toolbars and we're going to turn on the following toolbars. So advanced, camera, classifier, construction, drawing, dynamic components, edit, skip, large, and getting started, or getting started in large, location, measurements, principles, sandbox, section, shadows, solid tools, standards, styles, tags, triple connect, and views in the warehouse. And then click close. So we're going to turn all of those on. So I'm just going to scroll up for you to pause on the video so you can see which ones are turned on. Next, scroll down and you can see the rest of them and you can pause and have a look and see which ones are turned on. Great, once that's done, we can now arrange our toolbars. So if we pull that off to the side, I wanna just bring this first principal toolbar down off the top of the interface and drag and put it onto the side. Next, I'm gonna use the drawing toolbar and put that right beside there. So this is just how I like to set mine up. Again, it's a personal preference. Um, under view, toolbars just quickly then options I've got large icons turned on so if you want small icons to have more interface space you can do that as well so just letting you know that 
and I'm going to get the move tool and put that underneath there. Sorry, that's the edit toolbar. Then we're going to grab the construction toolbar and chuck that under there. Camera toolbar over here. Classifier, we'll put down the bottom here. Advanced camera tools down the bottom. Sandbox also down the bottom. Sections I'd like to have under here. Solid tools down the bottom. Layers or tags I should say now in SketchUp 2020 up there. Trimble Connect, depending on how much room I have I might put up here. Styles there. Standard views anywhere along the top and Trimble Connect fits in just nicely. Okay, so once you've set up your interface, I'd recommend closing down SketchUp and restarting your computer and that way you're guaranteed to remember the settings and positions of your toolbars. Thanks for watching.